graphs. So what are the first things I do when I set up a, a new Mac? So in the Finder, I go to Finder's menu and Preferences, and I turn on all the checkboxes. So I want to see connected hard disks. I want to see connected servers. I really don't want tabbed folders. I like folders to open in their own window. I do not want new Finder window to open into this awful Recents view. I prefer Documents or Desktop. Um, if you're desktop centric, then you know by all means use Desktop. But I, I like Documents, and that's basically all you need to change in here. And again, Season to Taste. If you don't want to see your hard disk icon, uncheck that box and it's gone. You know I'm pretty sure they put this in here. For Steve Jobs himself, he, he liked this sort of zen-like simplicity. However, zen-like simplicity can be confusing. So it's nice to have your hard disk icon there, I think, to anchor you and you know what's what, you know. So you can double click on it to open things. So uh, that's under Finder Preferences. So next thing I would do is go into Apple Menu System Preferences with the gears or click on it in the dock here. And I generally go left to right at the top. So start with general. Uh, I'm going to pick a highlight color of uh, the default yellow instead of the blue. And I like scroll bars to be visible all the time rather than chase them around because I'm old school. So here's another technology here, handoff. Allow handoff between this Mac and your iCloud devices. So this is a benefit of iCloud. So, for example, if you're reading an ebook on the iBook app, then you're on page 467, and then you pick up your iPhone or your iPad, it's going to remember the page number that you were on. So it's kind of nice. And there's other things that Handoff will do that I can't recall off the top of my head, but uh, it's going to remember what you were doing and. Uh, it's kind of a handy technology. So then I will go into desktop and screensaver. Now I generally pick a solid color, generally one of the grays, because I value my color sense. Because as a photographer, I, I don't want to have like a color in front of me that's going to skew my color perception. So a gray or a dark gray or a light gray, whatever shade of gray is what I would pick. You can also go and select one of the, the desktop pictures. Uh, use the dynamic desktop that's automatically going to change based on the time of day. You know, <laughs> there's lots of things in here you can choose from. And kind of, this is kind of a personal thing, right? Same thing with screensaver. I'm fond of the one called message and I like to say show with clock and uh, it gives me the name of the computer and I can also turn on hot corners. So if you toss your cursor into one of these four corners on your screen, you can have something happen here. So I like to start screensaver if I toss my cursor into the top right corner. So there's the screensaver and then I wiggle and it comes back. And then if you go into your security and privacy prefs, the default setting here is not ask for a password for a whole five minutes. Uh, and then once your computer is uh, all installed and all your data is here, I would go to five seconds. And uh, right now my password is Apple, which is easy to type. So that when I toss my cursor into that corner, if I don't wiggle it again immediately, uh, what's going to happen is it's going to lock it and I can't unlock it without typing in the password. So that secures my machine from casual interlopers who may have physical access while I, you know, go off to the bathroom or something. Uh, under language and region, uh, you can see that we have Canada selected because we select, selected the Canadian keyboard under keyboard preferences and text uh, I get rid of this these uh, lovely uh, shortcuts and I do not really want the computer correcting my spelling but I do want to have it know that I speak English Canadian eh? 
<laughs> anyway, so Canadian English is slightly different from American English or U.S. English and even slightly different from British English and it's nice that Apple recognizes this. You can see there's an update available. I'm going to say uh, try tonight. So, and no, I do not want automatic updates on. Turn them off. Okay. So under software updates, we can see what updates are pending. <sighs> oh yeah, so we have a supplemental update and you can have this automatically keep my Mac up to date. I generally turn that off. I would like to control when I update my Mac. Uh, if you're the kind of person who never does updates, you might want to turn that on. Energy Saver would be the next thing I would go to. Uh, on this Mac, we have automatic graphics switching between the NVIDIA uh, chipset and the Intel built-in uh, graphics. And I generally set my computer to never sleep while the power adapter is plugged in, and I like the display to stay up for 30 minutes. And I don't want to spin down any hard drives, and I don't want to enable power nap because I want the maximum performance. Now, if I click this button here, automatic graphics switching, that means the high-end video card is on all the time. And this will use more power and make my computer warm up. So, you know, you can leave it on, the, the switching, and uh, the algorithm is pretty good now. So it used to be sometimes you'd launch Photoshop and it wouldn't be quick enough to catch uh, the computer going, oh, it's Photoshop, I need to switch to the high-end graphics card. So then Photoshop will go, hey, uh, I notice your graphics aren't very good, and I'm going to disable your 3D stuff. And it's like, no. <laughs> so you would have to leave this off. But nowadays, I, uh, I don't see that problem anymore. It's, it seemed to go away way back when with, uh, I don't know, CS6. So I leave automatic graphics switching on if it's available. And it's only available on certain types of hardware. Um, I haven't mentioned Touch ID because this computer does not have a T2 chip and a Touch ID sensor. But I do like the fact that you could have your fingerprint in the system for security and you can use that for various things. So anything else to do here? Um, okay, in the dock, I do not like this show recent applications in dock. Um, you know, every time I launch an app, I don't want to see it over here uh, after I've quit out of the app. Okay, so, you know, if we leave this on and, and we launch something that isn't in the dock, oh, we'd have to find something that isn't in the dock first. What, what, what's not in the dock? Okay, terminal. Let's launch terminal, and then we'll quit out of it. And then you can see down here, there's terminal as a recent app has appeared. Now, it's kind of convenient for the first day or two. If you don't have things in your dock and you've quit out of it already, then you want to leave it in the dock. You just drag it to the left into the permanent area of the dock. And then you can go back in here and say, you know what, stop showing recent apps in the dock. Because it shifts everything uh, when that happens, and I'm not a big fan. Um, other things I would do on a laptop, I would go into trackpad preferences. I like tap to click. I hate all these other options and haptic force trackpad, that's not in here because this is an older machine, but I turn that stuff off because I don't like it, but if you like it, feel free. Uh, I like the old, hey, pretend I have a scrolling mouse uh, scrolling, and I generally turn off all of this stuff. And again, uh, I suggest that if you're new to the Mac, you turn off most of it, and then you turn on things one at a time. You can hover to see what, how to use a feature, and so on. So scrolling, and for example, it shows you how to scroll, two fingers, you can scroll up, scroll down. So scroll direction natural is like the iPad, so content follows your finger. Scroll direction the old school way is it's the opposite. You pretend you have a mouse wheel and you're moving the mouse wheel and it would go backwards. <laughs> so yes, I'm stuck on the backwards way, but uh, I'm more comfortable with it. And you know, you, you get used to it when you, know, you start to scroll and it'll realize it's the wrong way and you scroll the other way. So whatever uh, floats your boat, feel free to set this up the way you like it. If you have a connected mouse, you can come in here and I usually like tracking speed one better than default. I leave the rest of the things 
uh, on their defaults. Ditto for uh, keyboard setup. So there should be a keyboard, how long to delay before a repeat, and how fast to repeat things, and there's a number of other things. You know, use these as function keys or use them as the secondary functions that are lit up on them, you know. So for example, I can raise the volume on my Mac with these keys, right? Very handy. On the touch bar Mac, you have to click on the touch bar and then drag your finger back and forth. Same thing, just different way to do it. So that's pretty much it for initial setup. Like I go into sound and say, yeah, show me. And I, I always want to select the output device. And I may set up printers and stuff later. And uh, what else? Oh yeah, one thing I do like here is under accessibility and zoom, I turn on this use scroll gesture with modifier key to zoom. So if I hold down the control key, I can now use my scrolly mouse wheel or scroll with two fingers on the trackpad to zoom in and then I have to remember to control scroll backwards to zoom out again. Very handy for doing demos such as this. So that's pretty much it for Mac OS setup um, and you know if you want to check your iCloud settings you would come back into system preferences and click on iCloud and you can see oh look iCloud Drive is on it's photos is sort of set here you can go uh, just my shared albums and again I just want to turn this completely off and see it gives you this nice message here open photos to create a library it's like no I don't want to thank you see it doesn't even let me change it iCloud Drive options so I can say you know what um, Desktop and Documents isn't on. Preview can save things in iCloud. I don't really need that. Same thing with QuickTime. I don't want to save anything that's going to be really big, right? So Mail, System Prefs, Optimize Mac Storage. I don't really need that either. And, you know, you, you got to turn all this stuff off just to be careful that uh, weird stuff doesn't happen. So here's that Find My Mac option. It's saying, oh, location services is off. And it's like, well, you don't want to turn location services on. It's located in security and privacy. And you can say, oh, yes, um, you know, to put in the password. And we can turn location services on in order for these services to work, if we want to, or we can leave them off. You know, <laughs> so that's kind of that. Uh, Apple News. So if you're reading news on your iPhone, you're reading it on your uh, Mac. It'll it'll keep track of what stories you've read on both devices, and uh, you know, keep showing you things it thinks you might like. And uh, you know, you can do a number of things and if you don't want iCloud on at all you can just sign out and uh, you can say you know uh, yeah th this data is going to be removed and I can say that's fine turn it all off continue stop updating and continue and then it wants my password to confirm this so this is kind of a pain right to turn all this stuff off because we turned it on in setup. So, you know, think about this uh, for your purposes and decide whether you want to go through this. I mean, the whole iCloud experience to me is, is not very positive. I would rather just turn on individual things like if I'm going to use the Messages app, I really don't like it when my computer makes a noise every time I get a text on my phone. It's just annoying because then I'm, I get two devices beeping at me or calling me for my attention, right? So there are certain things I would rather not have. And, um, you know, avoiding iCloud is a biggie. So. so any questions, please feel free to drop a comment below. Um, that's all I've got for you today. Thanks for watching and fade out.